How have you seen successful people tackle problem solving and decision making? I think successful people don't meander that much. I, I've seen people, they, they, they go, they make a decision quickly. I learned that from one of my mentors, this guy, Jim Jordan. He was really good at like, he wasn't indecisive. Make a decision and it might not work, but it's a lot better. I think that frustrates people. And I, 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 I may have seen in videos that you had posted on Film Courage that people get frustrated sometimes on a film set. The director doesn't seem to know what they want, you know? And I don't mean by saying like, I don't know, but I mean that they're kind of indecisive. Like they want to try everything and people get annoyed at that because it takes a really long time and everything. So sometimes you just have to go with God and make a decision and <laughs> hope for the best. And I think uh, I've noticed that successful people do that. Successful people go with their gut a lot too. I, I, I talked about like Rob Lowe and Snoop Dogg have a lot in common. You wouldn't know that. Rob Lowe is sober and been sober for over 30 years. And Snoop Dogg is not sober. I don't know if you're aware of this. He, he likes to actually partake in marijuana smoking, believe it or not. So, uh, but they have a very similar work ethic. They grind constantly. And they're also always open to doing stuff. They're open to like new ideas, meeting people. They're not closed-minded. They're very open-minded. And they're very appreciative of their success. They both have an attitude like it could kind of go away at, at any moment. And they're great at fans to interacting with fans. Snoop was awesome with my kids. He, Snoop was on my son Cooper's YouTube channel and was on his show twice. Snoop Dogg was on my son's show, not once. He came on two different times on my son's YouTube channel. And it would call him Coop Dog. His name's <laughs> Cooper. So, just great with my kids, so nice. Rob Lowe met my mom over the weekend. My mom made a beeline to Rob Lowe after the movie was over and came up and started talking to him and he just knew how to handle it and said really nice things and they just, they just know, they've been around a long time. A lot of times, maybe if someone has a bad interaction with a celebrity, maybe sometimes they're the one being rude, like the way you approach someone, it's not respectful. But also sometimes it's somebody that's maybe a little newer that doesn't have that kind of know how to, just doesn't understand their celebrity that much. At this point, Rob Blow, Snoop, they know exactly who they are. So they know when someone meets them, it's a big deal and they know how to play that. Tom Cruise was that way. I met, I worked with Tom Cruise. Um, he narrated a project on this guy, Rick Hendrick, who we met for Days of Thunder. And uh, we were waiting for him to come into the room. First of all, I saw this happen outside. I went to go to the bathroom. I saw Tom Cruise is there. I'm like, of course he's here right when I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and he's in like a dress shirt. And he takes off his shirt and he says to his assistant, can you grab me a t-shirt out of my bag? And he goes, I don't want to keep you waiting anymore. Let's go. So he just comes into the room shirtless. <laughs> Now, I saw, I saw this unfold and it was very normal. Like, but no one in the studio saw this. They just saw Tom Cruise come in without a shirt on and the, the audio engineer goes, should we all take our shirts off? <laughs> so, but Tom Cruise was a professional. Like he, he, not just a professional in his narration, but a professional in how he interacted with everybody, how respectful he was. Like, he knew people's names. He, he knew this was a big deal for the people there to meet him, but he, he still carried it with some humility. And, and his skin was flawless looking. Like I'm studying his skin. And I'm like, this is a good looking guy. And he was just, uh, yeah, he, <laughs> he had to pronounce this guy's name. Uh, uh, it was a race car driver. His name was Jack Sprague. And for whatever reason, Tom Cruise couldn't pronounce this guy's name. So like, I remember he's reading, he's reading the VO and he's reading it off a teleprompter because he's dyslexic. And he's like, like three time truck series champion, Jack Sprug. <laughs> so he's like, how is that? And I'm like, uh, hey Tom, actually that's, uh, it's not Sprug, it's Sprague. He's like, okay, got it, no problem. <laughs> so then he's like, like three time truck series champion, Jack Sprague. And I'm like, 
like, is this guy screwing with me? <laughs> so that was like, uh, actually, Tom, it's Jack Sprague. He's like, sound it out for me phonetically. I'm like, it's like Jack Sprague. And he's like, got it, do it from the top. So play it, he's like, like three time truck series champion, Jack Sprague. <laughs> I was like, that's good enough, good, en good enough, you know, so, and yeah, he was so, he was so nice. And then, so we finish up and we're talking about who this film's about, Rick Hendrick. And it was a very emotional story. This guy, Rick Hendrick's son and the entire race team died in a plane crash. So Tom Cruise is doing a favor and I'm talking about Rick Hendrick. I'm like, he's such a nice guy. I'm like he helped my, my son when he was an infant. My son, when he was an infant, had stomach issues. He got him into a hospital, helped him out. And I mentioned that to Tom Cruise. He's like, is your son, is your son all right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, is there anything I can do? And I'm thinking like, what are you gonna do? Like propel into the hospital or something? I don't know. I'm like, that'd be awesome if you wanna help. But he was just, he was just super nice and uh, took pictures and just really, uh, just, I just saw somebody who totally understood his celebrity for that little slice of, two hours that I got to spend with him. Sure, yeah, it's really interesting when, you, when you're when you there with someone who either has a great reputation or a bad one, and sometimes they'll surprise you either way. I've seen people, and I won't say their names, but who, who were thought to be curmudgeon -y and they acted gracefully with people. And some of the people that came up to them weren't that, you know, they, they were very demanding of photos or whatever. So sometimes, yeah, you just get someone on a bad well, that, day. That's what happened with, uh, I was working with Kevin Costner, he narrated this. I went through this stretch in NASCAR where I worked with Paul Newman, Kevin Costner, and Tom Cruise in like three years. They narrated these projects. So Kevin Costner, I was told, somebody gave me this advice. They're like, actors don't wanna to be told how to read something. You need to give them the emotion. So I was like, okay, you know? And Kevin Costner's reading, and I give him some kind of direction. And I was like, can you, can you maybe do it a little more intensity, Kevin? And he's like, intensity? Okay, sure. So read it. I'm like, maybe even more intense. And he's like, well, you just read it for me. <laughs> and I'm like, he's like, you just read it and I'll just say it however you want me to say it. And then I remembered, I'm like, what that guy said. I'm like, he's testing me. So I'm like, I'm not going to do it. So I go, no, I don't want to tell you how to read, Kevin. Just give me the emotion. And then he's like, come on, you just, just tell me. And I'm like, no, I don't want, and then he says, like jokingly, he's like, come on, he called me the P word. And, and, and I realized everybody's full of shit. No one knows what they're talking about. Everybody's different. He wanted to be told exactly how to read it. And uh, he was like the sweetest, nicest guy. Um, I've been really lucky. Like I've never, I'm actually trying to think, I've, I don't think I've ever had a bad experience with a celebrity. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I've had some, but, They've been turned around. I can tell you this one, a bad Snoop story that turns good. So we're on a shoot with Snoop Dogg and he's, uh, he's mic'd and he doesn't want us booming the scene because it's like kind of a personal thing he's gonna talk about. So the audio guy goes, hey, Snoop's chains are all hitting his, his mic. You gotta get him to take off his chains. And I'm like, Really? You want me? I'm, I, you can't do it? All right. So, of course, I've got to go up to him. And he's wearing like like 30 chains, gold chains. And I go up and I tell him, hey, it's hitting your microphone. And he's like pissed. He's like, he's like, eh, MF this. He's like, you don't tell a rapper to take his chains off and this. And I'm like, uh, once again, somebody much taller than me. You know, I'm like looking up. And I was like, uh, Mr. Dog, we're not going to hear the... <laughs> It's not gonna sound good and it's not gonna be usable. So he said, then you wear the chains. I was like, I'll wear them. So he, he takes off the chains, puts them around my neck and I'm like walking around like Mr. T with all these chains on. The whole shoot, I'm wearing them. So did it, does the scene, it's great. I go up back up to him, I go, hey, got your chains. And then he goes, hey, I just wanna apologize. I, I was rude, sorry. You know, I didn't maybe say it exactly like that, but he was like, thanks for pushing me. And I appreciate that. And he goes, here, you keep this chain. And he gave me one of his chains, like a real weighty gold chain, diamonds on there. And the rest of the crew afterwards were eating. And they're like, how much do you think that's worth? You know, I'm like, I don't know. So I get home, I went to a jewelry store to get it appraised. 
and this guy's taking the chain and he's looking <laughs> at it with like one of those like monocle things and he's like uh I would say it's about 90. I'm like, 90 grand? And he's like, no, $90. He's like, he's like, this is all fake. It's like cubic zirconian, gold plated. And I said, oh. So I went to Snoop. I said, uh, hey, I got your chain appraised. I said it was only 90 bucks. He goes, you don't get a gift appraised? What's wrong with you? He said, that was a gift. He goes, I don't wear real jewelry when I'm out. Like, I think we were at like a bowling alley. He goes, of course, all my stuff is like from King Ice or something. None of that stuff's real. And I said, oh, all right. Fast forward to a couple years later, Snoop is telling me uh, I'm going through a divorce and I must have mentioned it to one of his assistants or something, this person, this woman, Nakani, I must have told her about it. So Snoop calls me into his Sprinter van and he seems mad. And the Sprinter van is where he goes sometimes to partake in his activities away from people. So he calls me in and he's like, hey, Nakani told me what you're going through. Really sorry, really, he actually goes, it breaks my heart to hear that you're going through that. And maybe maybe because it's coming from him at the time, but I just start like crying in front of him. Like I just lost it. And I'm thinking, great, you know, this is the guy who didn't want to <laughs> hug his kid on camera. Now I'm crying. So he actually like starts comforting me and like puts his arm around me. And he like had a little tear in his eye. And uh, I told this story to him. He doesn't seem to remember it, but uh, it, he, he was really like sweet to me. And then he said, he actually said, you know why I gave you that chain? Uh, it was a lion. And I said, no, why? He said, well, he said, because a lion protects their pride and you gotta be there for your kids no matter what. And you also, you have the heart of a lion. So I remembered that. And then, so I got this tattoo. Oh, this wow. was, this was the chain that, uh, that's beautiful. Snoop had given me the $90 chain. So it held like a deep, deep meaning for me in that moment that he would care enough to uh, comfort me. He, he offered to come to North Carolina to do a deposition in court for me. Can you imagine? Like one more witness, please. And like Snoop Dogg comes in. I'm like, you're never coming to North Carolina. Why, why are you offering this? That's never going to happen. He's like, yeah. But anyway. Um, I don't know where this all started, but...